Hey, Auntie. Hello. I'm going to start the <laughs> now. And if everyone will mute their um, mics, uh, unless you're actually speaking, so that um, we can go ahead and begin. Okay, do star six mute too? You don't know. Can you, because um, she's doing it from her phone, can the host just mute her? Yeah. You mute it, Carla. All right, Daphne, did you want to go ahead and get started? And yeah. Hello, everybody. Um, good afternoon and welcome to the One Life to Leave Foundation Caregivers Check-In uh, event. Today, our topic of the month is Heart Health Matters. And I'm excited to see everyone today. Welcome. My name is Daphne Uter and I am the one of the founders and CEO of One Life to Leave Foundation. We have a very fun and educational programs for you tonight. And uh, our guest speaker, um, Stephanie Diaz, uh, will, be, will be here today to share a lot about heart health and what you need to do to protect yourself and your heart. I'm having a hard time seeing the PowerPoint, Pam. I don't know if I lost the screen, sh the screen showing. Okay. Can everyone else see the PowerPoint? I yes, see I it. can see it. Okay, all right. Uh, oh, well, I just saw it, thank you. <laughs> it just popped back up. Okay, so first of all, um, we're trying to break the ice. Everybody, we're gonna ask each person to please share your story. Give us your name if you're on the call today, your location and a very fun fact about yourself. Um, so I've already told you that my name is Daphne Uter and I am in West Palm Beach, Florida. And a fun fact about me is that um, I guess I love to read. Um, reading, that's why I escape and this is how I um, meditate and not you know, get outside of my normal routine and my normal world so when I read, I kind of escape. That's my escape um, way. Um, I'm going to call on the next person. Or anybody want to volunteer? I'll let Pam, Pam go next. <laughs> well, welcome and happy Sunday, everybody. My name is Pamela Black, and I am one of the founders of One Life to Live Foundation. I'm a, a female veteran. Uh, of the U.S. Air Force, and I've been a military spouse and also a caregiver. Uh, so I am excited to be here today. I am joining you from Orlando, Florida. And one fun fact about me, um, I actually have a secret dream to be a stand-up comedian. So one day I will uh, be on a stage near you uh, doing some uh, live comedy. So that's one of my bucket list things. And if you all would love to turn on your cameras, we'd like to see everyone if possible. So feel free to turn on your camera and open up your mic. And I think I will pitch it to Latricia. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Latricia Johnson. I stay in Revere Beach, Florida. One fun fact about me is something new I tried this year, doing a lot more exercising, and I really enjoy it. Right. So, uh, Latricia, I saw you've been hanging out on the beach. Have you been exercising on the beach as well? Um, actually, I've been walking on the trail out there in Dyer Park now. Me and the kids we go out there play basketball, soccer, a little baseball. So we kind of do that now. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, I'll let you pick somebody, uh, Latricia. Mm -hmm. You want to call on someone else? Um, let's see. Mm -hmm. Who's that there? Last name Clark. Yeah, 
Oh goodness, would that be our letter? Yes. <laughs> okay. I'm not gonna turn on my camera right now, but um, I am Arletta Clark. I'm from Midland, uh, Georgia, Georgia. I'm a VA nurse. I work at the Fort Benning and Columbus VA clinic uh, here in our area. Um, I don't know, fun facts. Um, I don't know, I'm, I, I'll just tell you something about me. I'm also a full-time pastor uh, as well as a nurse. All right, welcome Arlita. Uh, so uh, Arlita, we'll let you pick someone else to share. Okay. Uh, Miss Gail Cozy. Pam, can you hear me? Yes. Hello? Yes. Yes, Gail. We hear you now. Okay. Am I am I on the camera? No. Can you see me? I don't see you. You may be coming up. I don't see you yet. Okay. Do I need to push something on here? Let's see. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm I sent you a message to start your video. Let's see if that works. We can probably turn it on for her. Who is the moderator? Okay. Anyway, I'll start. Hello, ladies. My name is Gail Kasi. Um, I live in West Palm Beach, but I have just survived the horrendous weather situation we had in Houston, Texas. Uh, speaking of caregivers, I'm they're caring for my brother because he can't travel back to West Palm right now or due to the uh, virus. Uh, I've been there since October and my daughter's been coming back and forth bringing me things from here, but I to make it home, or make it here on Friday. So I am glad to be in West Palm Beach after going through all of that horrendous weather situations. And when I say a survivor, I mean, I am a survivor because at one point we had to um, vacate the house and go to a hotel. And when we got to the hotel, although they were charging you full rental rates, they didn't have any electric in the hotels either. So that was really hard for me to deal with. Um, and I'm just glad to be a part of the meeting today. Uh, Pam invited me and I know Daphne. So, um, I'm glad to hear all of the nice things. Um, uh, one point about me today is just, I'm just truly grateful to be a survivor after what I just experienced on last week. And I'm gonna see who I can pick. Pam. I see you, Gail. Oh, you can see me, girl. I'm turning my glasses upside down. <laughs> we see you now. Uh, how about we girl. pick Ari? Ari hasn't gone yet. Okay, great. Uh -huh. Hi, Gail. Yes, we can see you. Um, hi, everyone. Okay. <laughs> my name is Ari. I am the um, one of the co-founders of the One Life to Live Foundation. And we, I just really, really love what we're doing. It's so rewarding. I did 20 years in the uh, Navy, retired. I was also a caregiver. And I'm just so happy that you guys logged in today. And I hope you enjoy. I was born and raised right here in um, West Palm Beach. Been all over, but I came on back. And um, I'm just going to pick my aunt. She's on. She is also the March Caregiver of the Month. And I want to really thank her for logging in because she actually just lost her mom, my grandmother, that turned 89 last month. And she still logged in. She wanted to be here. And um, Carla, are you on? Yes. I'm here. Hi. Can you guys hear me? Yes. 
Hi, um, my name is Carla Lewis. And um, like Ari said, um, I'm a caregiver. I was taking care of my mom. First, I started out taking care of my father when he got ill. And then my mom, and like she said, my mom just passed Monday. Um, not only was I a caregiver to them, my nieces and nephews too. So, yeah. Um, I was born and raised in Riviera Beach, Florida, where I live now. And a fun fact about me is I like to read. I challenged myself on my Kindle to read 100 books this year. <laughs> and since January, I have read 48 books already. So I'm going to see that challenge very soon. And that's it about me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing, Carla, too. Um, and and our welcome. condolences to you. And, and again, this is why we're here. Um, and I, I'm just so happy to see so many people on the call today. And, and, and the goal is for connection. You know, we all are going through different challenges. But Carla, thank you for showing up because your testimony is a blessing to so many others. Thank you. We'll let you choose someone. Um, I'm sorry, I can't see anyone. I'm not on camera. Okay, I see Stephanie. <laughs> Stephanie, would you like to uh, introduce yourself? You may be muted, Stephanie. I was muted. I should know these things. <laughs> um, okay, so my name is Stephanie Thomas. I hail you from the great city of Atlanta, Georgia, where I am an assistant professor of nursing. I've been a nurse for almost 30 years now, uh, graduating out of University of Tennessee, Knoxville. Um, I am also um, a, a executive director of a nonprofit working with veterans um, out of Memphis, Tennessee. Um, Stafford Senior Care Management Services. I also uh, am related to Pamela. So, <laughs> woo -woo. Um, I have uh, been asked to speak today. And so I look forward to after all the introductions that we can do that. Fun fact, um, I, I am just, uh, uh, I guess, bringing my head up for air to restart living some fun life. I have Pam to encourage me and, and move me forward. And so I've, I've been doing some things I haven't done in a very long time. So that's my fun, my fun fact. Yes. And thank you for mentioning that, Stephanie. We have to keep living, even though we're caring for others and we got a lot of things going on in our lives, we have to care for ourselves, you know, and start to do some of the things that we enjoy in life. So thank you for sharing, Stephanie. Did you want to pick someone else? I'm not sure who hasn't gone yet. Um, I see Fiola. Okay. Is that how you pronounce your name? Yes. OK, great. Hello, everyone. I'm happy to see you, uh, Pam, Daphne. Uh, my name is Fiola Dorisse. I'm relating to Daphne. Um, and what else do I have to say? I think fun fact, right? I love uh, having fun with my two beautiful daughters and then weed. That's my fun fact. Hello. Hi, Fiola. Okay. And thank you, Fiola. And uh, would you like to pick someone else to go next? Uh, I haven't heard Daphne. I don't know if she's, if she's on right now. Can she hear us? So I can choose Daphne. Thank you, Fiola. Um, since I've already went, um, everyone, I'm gonna go ahead and pick um, June. June, are you on mute? I was hoping I would never get picked. <laughs> no, ma'am, you gotta, you gotta show up, June. We're happy you're here. All right, everyone. Hello. Good afternoon. My name is um, uh, June Halstead Cox, 
And I am located um, in Palm Beach Gardens slash West Palm Beach on the border slash Rivera Beach. <laughs> um, actually, it, it, that's really true. <laughs> um, um, a fun fact about me is that, um, I don't know if that's a fun fact, that I'm a veteran. Um, that's a boring fact, actually. Um, fun fact about me. Well, I just came back, and I made sure that I came back on time. I went to South Florida Fair to watch dinosaurs, and it was a really a nice experience. Oh, my goodness, June. I went like two years ago to that, and I loved it. Daphne, did you go with me? Yes, we went together. To yes. Oh, I didn't know they were back. So yeah. I just want to share, June, thank you for being here. And June is our VA co-worker, but she is also a beautiful spirit, and she supports our organization, and she also helps to care for so many others. So thank you so much, June, for your support and for being here today. June, did you want to select the next person for introductions? Um, uh, I'm trying to see quite a few people on here. Uh, your name, see, Stephanie Thomas. I like that name. Stephanie, Stephanie just Thomas. went. She, she's uh, she went. She just went? Oh, okay. Uh -huh. oh, oh, that's the speaker, right? Isn't it? Okay, yeah. let me see. Uh. Nancy? Did Nancy go yet? No? It looks like it's Nisi. Nisi Clark. Oh, Nisi Clark. Mm -hmm. Is Nisi Clark there? Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to the call. I am Nisi, um, born on 4th and Rosemary, um, at Twin Lakes High School, um, a veteran. Um, let me see, is, what else am I supposed to say? Um, I am located currently in um, <clears throat> North, Calif North Hollywood, Burbank area of California right now. So I went from coast to coast after um, the unexpected and sudden um, death of my husband last month. Um, you know, trying to, who, who was also a veteran, um, trying to find joy in my pain, um, got to survive, and let me see, oh, I know the best fun fact um, to tell you all, I love to travel, love, love, love to travel, COVID kind of stopped that, but while traveling, I met Daphne, and she was so recognizable because she had this amazing bag, I'm a I'm, I'm, I'm a, oh, I see bags and shoes. I go crazy. Daphne had this amazing bag and it was so purposefully um, that we would not only leave the same plane, but end up on the same train, the plane train. Here she and I are. And um, I met her. She helped me out in um, where I needed to go because she had a rental and it was just so amazing. And that is how I was introduced to One Life to Live, to the One Life to Live Foundation, in which I um, had the honor of meeting Pam and Ari and looking forward to meeting each of you. Thank you. Thank you, Denise. We love you and miss you. Love you too, and I miss y'all. Nisi, would you like to pick the next speaker? The, the next speaker next month? I mean, the next person. Oh, pick the next person who, oh, let me see who haven't I seen, uh, I haven't heard from. And I was a little bit late going on. Who is Moto E6 with a hand raised? That's Tina. Hi, okay. Tina. Hi. Hi, everyone. I hope y'all can see me and I hope you can't see me because I'm not all dressed up. I'm not all dolled up. Today, I'm trying to relax. Yeah. But I'm... Did she freeze up, Pam? I think you froze up. 
So, okay, someone just turned her video off and they may help her so we can hear. All right, Miss Tina, can you still hear us? Oh, I think she may have, I think it may have been from her end, so we can okay. um, move to, okay, she may be. She logged back in. Okay. You on mute. You on mute, Miss Tina. Let me unmute. Y'all know I'm old and I'm not tech savvy, but I'm trying. Can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much for having me. And Denise, I want to thank you so much for the invitation and the link. And I want to thank One Life to Live Foundation. As I was saying before, I was with you ladies at the health spa. My name is Renetta Daniels. Everyone calls me Tina. I have been a caregiver for 14, 15 years, starting from New York. Right now, I am retired. And I had to retire early because my husband was diagnosed in 2017 with dementia. So y'all, I'm kind of going through. I don't want to put a damper on your day. I know we're supposed to think positive and have joy in our hearts, but I'm really kind of sad because it's a, it, I'm at a place where people that I thought were in my corner have basically all but turned their backs on me because when he was up and could do for people, they were all around him. Now he has nobody but me and my son. And I thank Denise and I thank you all for this meeting this morning um, to kind of give me a chance to talk to people who oh, she went know, know and understand this journey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ms. Tina, when you get to a spot where you're um, back in, in a good connection, because we you froze up for a minute. Yeah, she has a bad connection, y'all. Ooh, there you go, Miss Tina. So, yes. Mm -hmm. So I was just um, wanting to reconnect with you guys so that I can have someone to talk to, somebody to call, somebody may to just come by and give me a wave or something every once in a while, because it is very lonely and I'm tired. I get no rest. I'm tired, y'all, and I don't know what else to do. I don't want to put him in a facility because I've worked in those facilities. And to be honest with you, I know kind of how we treat people when we're at an overload and when, 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 when the staff is short and it's COVID situation. Him 24 seven, even with the caregivers, cause some of the ones they send are just, they, they have no clue. That's all I'm going to say is that they have no clue. Uh, it's hard, y'all. Like Denise, I, I like to travel. I've, I've been a go-getter. I've been a work in the church. I've, I, 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 I like doing things. And this is just like the COVID situation has put a damper on all of our lives. But when you're caring for someone with who can't care for themselves, who can't even don't even know where they are, and it's your loved one, it touches you somewhere that you can't even describe. So y'all just pray for me, just pray for me, just pray for me, please. I need help. Thank you, that's all I have. Um, I don't know who the next person is, I see an Ari Lewis. Miss Tina, I already went, but just know that you have all my prayers and all my love. And just know that Pam, Daphne, and myself, we are always here for you. And we will be keeping in touch with you even more. Okay, thank so, so thank much. you so much for being here. And thank you for opening up your heart and sharing with us today. 
Thank you so much for listening. Yes, ma'am. Has anyone not shared, um, not introduced themselves that would still like to take the opportunity before we proceed with today's meeting? I will. Um, Go ahead. Okay, I'll, okay, thank you. Um, my name is Carlette Thomas and I am a childhood friend and classmate of Stephanie Short Thomas, soon to be Dr. Stephanie Short Thomas. Um, I am really here in support of her. I have a um, reputation for lack of a better word of showing up uh, the ministry of presence for people that have shown up for me, people that I love and care about and people that care about and love me. So that is my uh, number one reason for being here. Uh, concerning uh, caregiving. I have been a caregiver. I have been a caregiver at a very young age uh, prior to becoming an adult for a sick parent. I have also been a surrogate parent for younger siblings. I have also been a single parent as a uh, teen and a uh, young adult, what have you. Uh, raising a child on my own. I have also been a person that has needed caregiving. Mm -hmm. So I know uh, both ends and in between of the spectrum. I have uh, several family members present and past that are either military and or veterans of the military possibly all branches. You know, a lot of times you don't know everything about everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, mostly uh, Army and uh, Air Force. Actually, one of my nephews is current um, military Air Force. I have um, classmates, church members, uh, neighbors, family members, and, and uh, friends, what have you, that have been either in the military or veterans. Uh, I am a person that respects all people from all walks of life and am uh, very grateful for the sacrifices that have been made not only by military past and present and veterans, but also uh, with this being the last day of uh, Black History Month, though we know that we are, that are Black, uh, it's Black history for us every day. I am grateful uh, eternally grateful for all of these sacrifices that our people specifically, but all people that mean well have uh, sacrificed on behalf of all of us to uh, be, do, and have uh, better. And so um, that's why I'm here. Uh, the heart of those of you that are dealing currently with caregiving, uh, my heart goes out to you. My prayers go up for you that you will be able to endure whatever it is you have to endure, that God will give you the grace and that you will find the resources that you need. I'm not gonna take up all the time, but I will say that at the time that I was uh, having to be a caregiver, there were not many resources. There were not much information. We're talking about the caregiving for me, I'm 51 years old, caregiving for me started 40 years ago. Wow. So if you can just imagine what the resources were, what the information was, and having lack of support and experiencing some social distancing and a whole bunch of other things, if you're having to do caregiving now, take it from me, whether you know me or not, you are blessed. You are blessed. Uh, a fun fact for me is that I love to read. I love to inspire people. I love to write. And um, I just love people, period. So... That's that's it for me. And sorry if I took too much on the introduction. I'm not camera ready and that not camera shy, but I'm not camera ready. And uh, that's why I'm not on camera today. Thank you for uh, allowing me to be in your space. God bless all of you. Wow. Uh, Carlette, uh, I think it's Carlette. You, you brought up a, a good point about uh, showing up. You know, we have to show up for each other. Uh, whether we know it or not, everybody needs somebody in their life to show up. And so I, I think that's what this platform is about, letting caregivers and each of us know that you're not alone, that, you know, we're committed to be here every month and throughout the month. 
you know, if you need someone. So Miss Tina, um, my heart definitely goes out to you and we're all just a phone call. And like you say, a drive by away. So don't feel afraid or hesitate to reach out. And Pam, Miss Tina, the, she picked up a caregiver buddy already. Okay. Miss Clark, Clark wants to be her caregiver buddy. So we have to link those two up. Yes, 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 yes. Well, so let's, Tina, we'll get your information later to Miss Clark. Is Miss Tina in West Palm Beach? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Tina and I are already friends. I invited her um, to this meeting today. Okay. So we're, we're together, but I'm just not in the area right now, but I'll, I'll definitely be calling in and checking in on her um, a bit more. Thank you so much, Lindsay. And um, I might have to get her contact information from you because I don't think I have it on my um, database. Let's see. So we don't want to forget anybody. Did Felicia, did you go already to introduce yourself? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm um, a colleague of Stephanie as well. So I was listening in on everything. Um, I'm a caseworker here at Piedmont Henry Hospital and I'm also a case manager at Grady. I don't have anything to share. <laughs> oh, one she's, also, she's also a veteran. She's in the military. <laughs> yes. yes, I just got out of the military in May. What oh. branch? Army. Who? Uh... Go Navy, <laughs> go Navy. <laughs> we're, we're all sisters and brothers, though. Thank so. you for being here today. Thank you for having me. I see um, we have, I think, JT is on and also uh, Ricky Petty logged in. If any of them want to introduce themselves, if not, we'll go ahead and proceed. We also have our later clock. Did you already go our later? Our later? Yeah, I think a letter went. So if anybody else uh, would like to just tell us your name, where you're calling in from, and one fun fact about yourself. Okay. Okay, uh, Ricky's typing in the chat. He says he's in a location where he's unable to speak, but he's listening. Um, Ricky Petty is the uh, project director of Healthier Boynton Beach. They also <clears throat> have programs dedicated to caregivers in his um, general location, and they are doing amazing things. And we'll be collaborating with them more in the future because, you know, we want to um, continue to provide care to everyone in the area. And they have a good, good number of caregivers. Okay, we are going to move on with the program. Um, I'll wait for the... Thank you everyone for sharing your story and for telling us a little bit about yourself. We appreciate you coming on the call today and we are super excited and that Stephanie is going to talk to you, Nurse Stephanie is going to talk to us about hot health today. Um, so we're looking forward to hearing from her soon. Oh, it looks like the slide is up now. Mm -hmm. So I would like to introduce to you Miss uh, Nurse Stephanie from Stafford Care Management Services. Stephanie, you have the floor. Stephanie, would you like to uh, share your slides and I can stop sharing? Yeah, if you can give me control, I think I I think you can see it. Do you see women's heart health? Yes, we do. Okay, good. All right. So, okay. So again, I'm Stephanie Short Thomas. For anybody that um, joined uh, after I introduced myself, um, I have been a nurse uh, for a long time, almost 30 years. Uh, currently, I I, I, I I I am a assistant professor of nursing at uh, one of the local schools here in Atlanta, Georgia. 
And um, uh, I was asked to speak about women's heart health, which is uh, on this very last day of February because February is the month for heart health. And, um, and so I put together something and hopefully this is helpful to each of you. Feel free, I, I typically do a very uh, relaxed uh, presentations when I'm talking. So if you have any questions, anything that comes up, you can put it in the chat or you can just stop me midstream. I can pick right back up, it's not a problem, okay? All right, so um, love your heart. Uh, why is this important for us as women, um, as men? Um, um, our heart is a vital organ in our body. And a lot of times we as people, we allow stress, we allow uh, just, just many, many factors of life to um, kind of allow us to or, or make us not really take care of that vital organ. Um, through, um, you know, just working, you know, doing other things for other people, we miss out on being very active uh, because our lives are so fast paced, we typically don't eat well. And so we have problems controlling cholesterol, managing our blood pressure. Um, we have problems controlling blood sugar levels. And a lot of us probably pick up a little weight or more, than, more weight than we want to have. Um, and some of us just for, uh, uh, um, I guess a, a, a vice to kind of help calm and, and de-stress, we smoke. And so in this, in this month of um, February, the American Heart Association, we do a promotion about Heart Month. And so uh, one of their promos is love your heart, get active, eat well, control cholesterol, manage your blood pressure, reduce blood sugar, lose weight, and quit smoking. And so what I want to do is kind of talk through some of these concepts because what I typically teach um, in, in my classes is, uh, this is excellent information, but it's not detailed enough for people to really know steps to be able to do these things. And so hopefully that's what I can help you with today. Um, what does the American Heart Association say about heart health? Our hearts is a national effort to encourage and motivate people to adopt heart healthy behaviors together. Uh, research shows having social support and personal networks make getting regular physical activity, eating healthy, losing weight, and quitting smoking easier. So how many people on the call actually can say that they get physical activity every day? Every day? Every day. So according to the definition of physical activity, according to the American Heart, that is at least 30 minutes of physical activity. So how many people take 30 minutes out for themselves just to go outside take a deep breath, walk in what is considered fast pace or medium pace, uh, get their heart rate up. How many people that's on camera, show of hands or, or click on the little link that says, I do this. <laughs> I don't see any hands on the screen. Okay. In, my, in my mind, Stephanie, that's what I, and in my heart, that's what in I- In your would. mind and your heart, but that's not gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> so physical activity is 30 minutes. It is a requirement for your heart health to do at least a minimum of two and a half hours a week. That is only five days out of the seven. So start there. Eating healthy. What does eating healthy mean? Eating healthy is knowing first your body type, knowing the types of foods that actually uh, um, metabolize well in your body. And so eating healthy really looks different for everybody. Some people do uh, vegan, some people do vegetarian, some people do, uh, what's this new thing, um, keto, uh, but not all things fit everybody. So the first thing that you have to do is you have to identify first what works for you. And then if you do physical activity and you, and you change your behavior in the types of foods that you eat, you typically will lose weight just by virtue of doing those things. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to put a lot of focus on that, but the, the losing the weight is a benefit. And from a heart perspective, um, when you have less weight on your body, your heart does not have to work as hard. And that's how it benefits heart health. Okay, and then of course, everybody knows smoking is not good for you. Is there anybody on the call that believes smoking is beneficial? No. I just had this discussion last week with some of my students. Everybody knows that smoking is not good for you, but we also know that nicotine is an addictive, is, is, an, is addictive. And so once you start to smoke, it's very, very, very hard to stop. Well, what's the risk factors for people who smoke who also have heart condition? 
smoking actually constricts the blood vessels in your body and makes it harder for your heart to pump blood out to your vital organs. So that's why they push not to smoke. So how can you improve heart health? Maybe you can't stop smoking. Maybe the thing that you do is you reduce the number of cigarettes that you smoke. And so start there. In most cases, heart disease is preventable when, when people adopt a healthy lifestyle, which includes not smoking or reducing the smoke, maintaining a healthy weight, controlling blood sugar and cholesterol, treating high blood pressure, getting at least, like I said, 150 minutes of moderate intensity physical activity a week and getting regular checkups. So um, you, can do, you can do that just by doing 30 minutes a day, brisk walking. So if you like to be outside, if you like fresh air, just start walking every day. Uh, this is the 57th consecutive American Heart Month. Uh, and as, as, as I stated, this is the last day of the month. But we know that heart health is something that we have to do every day, 365 days of the year. Um, this is also um, the month that we celebrate of American Heart Health in addition to Black women's heart health. And so this is Awareness Week. Um, the, the Awareness Week for African-American women or women of color is February 12th through the 16th. And as you know, we were gonna speak about this last week. So you might find a, a few slides in here that were for last week. <laughs> um, so I'm clicking and clicking and clicking. How much time do I have you guys? I really didn't ask that question. Okay, heart disease is a leading cause of death for women. One in three women in the United States live with heart disease. As a baseline, how many people on the call actually know what their blood pressure is? Okay, so one of the things that I like to teach my patients, my students is to teach people how to learn their baseline first. So. Go to a Walmart, go to any, any place that has a blood pressure machine that's free or buy one because it's really, as you age, you really should have one in your home. Um, find out what your baseline is first. Do some very basic lab work. If you go to a physician, ask for some very basic labs that pertain specifically to heart health and they'll know exactly what those labs are. Uh, black women and Latino women are at higher risk for heart disease by virtue of diet, by virtue of limited physical activity, um, just because we typically do not do either of those things at the same rate or level as other ethnic groups. And so that puts us at a higher rate, a higher risk for heart disease. Um, it's a term for disorders of the human heart and blood vessels, such as words like arrhythmia, uh, clogged arteries, which, is com which comes specifically from foods or types of foods that we eat, usually high in fat, high in cholesterol. And it's also another term that's a kind of a, a catch-all for people who have heart failure. African-American adults are more likely to be diagnosed with coronary heart disease, and they are more likely to die from heart disease. So that's, that's, not, a, that's not a good fact. Although African-American adults are 40% more likely to have high blood pressure, they are 10% less likely than their non-Hispanic white counterparts to have their blood pressure under control. Why is that? We typically don't take our medicine. It's a very simple, it's a very well-known fact. Um, it could be a combination of we don't take our medicine, but it also could be a combination of the fact that we have not gone to the doctor to have the, uh, the fact that we have high blood pressure identified. Uh, more African-American men die from heart attacks associated with stress than any other ethnic group in the United States. But this is actually my area. Um, I also am uh, actually pursuing, as, as Carla said, I'm pursuing my doctorate uh, in public health. And so I will tell you that not only is this a true fact for the United States, but it's true for the world. Uh, we outrank every other ethnic group in the world. Stroke is identified as being 67% higher in African-American men than other ethnic groups, and 88% are more likely to die from a stroke than Caucasians. That is an education issue, uh, lack of information, and uh, lack of seeking uh, or having access to health care. The American Heart Association says that African-Americans are more than three times as likely to die from heart disease caused by high blood pressure as Caucasians. 
and high blood pressure is actually manageable. So if you don't know what your baseline is, let me, let me uh, highly recommend or uh, suggest that you get a blood pressure cuff and you keep a track, keep a, a log of it for about um, two weeks and get an idea, take one in the morning, take one in the evening and just see where you fall. Uh, also, if you keep a, a log of the types of foods that you are eating, you may see a trend in if your blood pressure shifts up or down based on the types of foods that you eat. So that's a simple way to kind of get a baseline and it's a good thing that you can take with you when you go to your doctor, okay? Um, when you have issues with heart disease, you automatically are at risk or increased risk for stroke. So there are six key facts about strokes. Um, strokes happen when a clot, a clot or a rupture interrupts blood flow to the brain. Uh, without oxygen-rich blood, brain cells will die. And so how does the stroke occur? Anytime you have something, um, uh, uh, atherosclerosis um, in, the, in your blood vessel, it basically clots off or prevents blood flow. And you have so much pressure that builds in that, in that vein that the vein just ruptures. And so those are different types of strokes, but they are each strokes. Um, there are three types. One is ischemic, one is hemorrhagic, and one is transient. Um, TIAs, which is the transient ischemic attack, may be something people have heard more often, the word TIA or the phrase TIA. This is what we identify in healthcare as a mini stroke. It's really meant to serve as a warning and it is meant for you to then take action to do something because if you take action when you've had a TIA, you actually can prevent having a massive stroke, which, which, which will typically cause physical damage and limitation and or death. And so it really serves as a warning. Uh, you have about 185 reoccurring strokes happen every year. That means that people have had a stroke and then they have another one. I personally know a, a very good friend of mine. We've been friends since 2009. And he initially uh, was my patient. And when I first met him, it was because he had indeed had a heart attack. Um, it, and I have spent the last 11 years, 12 years, working with him and teaching him about signs of stroke, risk factors for heart disease. He has since had three strokes. But because of the things that I taught him about the signs and symptoms of stroke, on the first two strokes, he was actually able to get himself to the hospital and he had no residual loss. He recovered 100%. On the third time, he was not where he needed to be and it took his family too long to get him to the hospital and he did have some residual loss. But I just recently saw him last week and just based on some things that I've been kind of working with him, he's actually done extremely well. Um, this time last year, he didn't even know who I was. He couldn't grip his hands. He couldn't, you know, ball his fists up. He couldn't do a lot of things. And just last week, I saw him walking, lifting wood, using a hammer. And so um, you can recover from these things, but it's better for us to learn the things that we can do now to prevent it from happening. Um, about one in four stroke survivors are, are at risk for another, but the good news up to 80% of second clot related strokes may be preventable. And that's because you learn the, the signs and the symptoms that you need to know. How do you reduce your risk? If you've had a stroke, create a plan with your doctor to prevent another one, which may include managing high blood pressure, that blood pressure cuff helps tremendously, and cholesterol, losing weight, increasing your physical activity, taking your medications and watching the types of foods that you eat and discussing an aspirin or other medicine regimen. What does an aspirin do for a person who, who has had a stroke? Does anybody know? What's the, why, do, why do we tell uh, people to take an aspirin a day, an 81 milligram aspirin a day? Does it thin the blood? It thins the blood. Mm -hmm. And as long as you have what, what we identify uh, lay, lay, layman as thin blood, is you cannot form a clot. And so one of the one of the one part of the regimen for people who have had a stroke um, is to have them take 81 milligrams a day. That's a baby aspirin, not a regular aspirin, which is 325 milligrams, but an 81 milligram. And that actually helps you. And so I would say talk to your doctor if you feel like you're at risk 
and that might be something that they put you on. They taste pretty good. They taste like candy, so it wouldn't be hard to take. <laughs> The longer stroke goes untreated, the greater the chance of lasting disability. And so uh, we teach this acronym, FAST, face drooping, arm weakness, speech difficulty, time to call 911. So I like to share a story. I, I share this story with my students. So I will share this as well. Um, I, started, I started working on my, 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 my research focus is on hypertension management for African-American men. And I decided to do that because in 2010, my uncle who was an avid runner was 57 years old, but he refused to take his blood pressure medicine because blood pressure medicine has a tendency to make men um, not in, what's the word? They, they have difficulty with sexual function. And so a lot of times men, African-American men, Caucasian men, they will not take blood pressure medicine for that reason. And so my uncle, although he knew he had high blood pressure, he wanted to try to control it with physical activity. Uh, well, for a period of time, he stopped running. During that period of time, his blood pressure was so high that he ended up actually having a hemorrhagic stroke uh, while standing in the garage with his friends. They, they, they noticed every single part of the fast symbol. They said his face started to droop, half of his body uh, went slump, and he couldn't talk. But almost as soon as they noticed it, he came back 100%. And he was like, oh, I don't feel good. I think I'm going to go lay down. Well, what they didn't realize was they should have called 911 because he was having a hemorrhagic stroke right in front of them. He walked out of his uh, friend's garage, he walked across the street, and he literally, they said, as soon as he stepped a foot in his driveway, he dropped dead. And he, uh, it took, um, well, he, he, he fell out, but it took a couple of days before he actually died. But when I got to the hospital that night, I knew he was gone. Uh, the bleed was so big, there was no way they were going to ever recover him. And wow. so something as simple as a baby aspirin or taking a blood pressure medicine would have probably saved his life. So I encourage all of you to take it very seriously. Um, the CDC currently has a social media campaign. It's called Spread the Word. And although I know this is the last day of February, it's still it's beneficial for us to, to take charge and do this. Um, they have, if you go to their website, you can find two of the, this is only, I think, two of six phrases that they have for you to upload to your social media page. The two that I chose to show today, uh, take charge of your blood pressure, a healthier heart can lead to a healthier life. The Surgeon General's call to action provides tools and strategies to control high blood pressure. So the CDC is an excellent resource for anybody that wants ideas of things to do. I mean, they have so much information specific to African-American people and every other ethnic group. And so if you're looking for tips Go to the CDC, go to their search engine, type in whatever you're looking for. You'd be surprised how much stuff comes up. Um, another one of theirs is regularly monitoring your blood pressure with support from your healthcare team can help lower your risk for heart disease and stroke. You can check your blood pressure at the doctor's office, at a pharmacy, or even at home. Uh, a blood pressure cuff costs about 30 to 40 bucks. Um, I have like three mm -hmm. house all over this place just because and a lot of times when people come, I make them check their blood pressure. Just, that's what I do. <laughs> um, Not take your shoes off, but check your pressure. <laughs> it's, it's literally one sitting at my door right now. And check your pressure. Oh my God. <laughs> check your pressure. Uh, physical activities. Uh, and, and let me say this. Not only do I make my friends who are usually in their 50s check their pressure, my son's friends do it as well, and they're in their 20s. Yeah, because you yeah. need to know your baseline, not when you're 50, but when you're 20, so you know yeah. if you go up or down. Mm -hmm. um, the activity mm -hmm. that involves steady rhythmic movement of the legs and arms are called aerobic exercises and are especially good for the heart. You have a couple of examples. If you don't like to walk, you can run, you can swim, you know, go natural and you can swim as much as you want. Uh, bicycling, dancing, if you like to dance, you know, uh, belly dancing, moving, shaking, whatever it is, just moving this is what you have to do. The, the point is to get your heart to pump and to get your heart rate up. Uh, you have adults with chronic conditions or disabilities. They should also get regular exercise. Even if there's li limitation in their mobility, they can do what's called chair exercises. Um, it works just as well. 
Uh, the goal is, like I said, 150 minutes a week. And so that's doable if you break it up into 30 minute sections, right? Yoga, uh, this, is, this is for my sister, Miss Madam Yoga, who I still can't do half the stuff she does. Uh, <laughs> yoga also improves heart health by increasing circulation and blood flow. In addition, practicing yoga can help lower blood pressure. It can help lower cholesterol and blood glucose levels, as well as the heart rate, which can all add up to a lower risk of hypertension, stroke, and heart disease. So, you know, yoga is also another excellent uh, uh, physical activity for us. Um, these are our two top leading health resources that I think most people are familiar with, the American Heart Association, which is also the American Stroke Association, and of course, the Centers for Disease Control, which is right here in the great city of Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, these are five things that you can do every day to keep your heart healthy. Eat healthy fats, not trans fats. If you don't know the difference, Google it. We need fats in our diet. So you don't get rid of all the fats. You just get rid of the ones that are bad fats. Um, and then practice good dental hygiene. Uh, a lot of people don't know this. When you have gum disease, it is a direct access to your heart. And so it is a very risky thing to have poor gum health because it increases your chance for having heart disease. So floss, okay? Uh, get enough sleep, don't sit for too long at one time and avoid secondhand smoke like the plague if that's something that you can do. Ask your friends, I have, I have people in my house that smoke and they have to go outside because I need to live until I'm 105. Amen. All right. So thank you very much. I hope that was helpful. It was fast. Uh, you're welcome to send questions via Pam or you can Pam, you can give my information out and send them directly to me. Definitely. There's a lot of comments that says this is great information. Great. Oh, I, I'm not reading. I'm sorry. Let me go to the comments. That's okay. It's like, so I've asked everybody to send us their questions and we can get them to nurse Stephanie, um, okay. you know, okay. even offline. But this is like, I learned a lot today and I'm like convicted now that I need to act right because I'm not trying to. Yes, we, we need to act right. There, are, the, I, It is very difficult. Um, like I said, I've been a nurse since 93. But it's very difficult to go into a hospital setting and see people that I know really don't have to be uh, sick, sick. Um, I, I tell a story to my students. I used to make them uh, do um, uh, teaching plans for their patients. And so one day I had a student and she was doing this great presentation about heart health and she had all of her cute little, you know, um, visual aids and she had covered everything so pretty and the lady was a, a african-american lady she was in her 50s and she had a heart attack she had two i think two blockages well in walks her son who's in his 20s with a literally a bucket of kentucky fried chicken fried and i said to her what are you going to do with the guy to the guy with the bucket of chicken and she said, oh, Miss Thomas, I, I can't say anything to him. I don't want to hurt his feelings. I said, well, you're going to hurt his feelings because you're going to let him die. Oh, say it. So we had to revamp and I made her redo that presentation. And we talked directly to the bucket of chicken and how the bucket of chicken was going to kill him. And uh, I don't know if he put the whole bucket of chicken down, but I know he knew that his mother did not need any more chicken because she, he was going to lose his mom. And so I am a, I am a uh, very real, open, straight to the point uh, lecturer and educator. And I like people to, to, to operate in the same way. And so hopefully on that day, we changed at least three people life because while we were doing the presentation, her friend walked in too. And so, you know, one person can help another person help another person. And so that's how we change lives and, and help people improve their health. Thank you so much, Stephanie. We appreciate you coming in today. Um, that was really some great information. Um, and I hope everybody takes something from that presentation today that you could learn to better your health in the future. Anybody else want to add anything? We are getting ready to close, um, but thank you everyone. I'd like to acknowledge all the caregivers on the call. Um, my number is 561-809-9065. If you ever need somebody to speak to, um, please feel free to reach out to me. 
um, I'm more than happy to take a little time of my schedule to set up to talk to you. So I'm available and Pam and Ari will be more than happy. We are here in West Palm and we can assist where, whenever we can. Um, I just want to close today with a quote like I always do. Um, so like Stephanie um, just mentioned, you have a big heart, so you have to take care of it. So try not to lose your heart. Don't lose the cigarettes, lose the junk food and loosen up and move. Those are the three quotes from um, American Heart Association as well. And the last thing is um, coming together is the beginning. Keeping together is always progress and working together is a success. So keep that in mind um, as you go to your day today. Thank you so much for coming and we'll see you next time. And just remember that um, we have our next call um, in the last week of um, March. The third Sunday. It's, it's the third Sunday. The third Sunday of March. Feel free to join our call. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. We'll see you next time. Thank you, everybody. Take Thanks that blood Stephanie. pressure. Yeah, take your blood pressure. <laughs> Check on your people. <laughs> Eat right. Stop smoking. We got a whole campaign. I'm about to go walk in now, so... That's I'm not right. gonna tell no stories, but I will <laughs> get it done. <laughs> Everybody have a good day. Bye. All right. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Pam, we should probably stop recording, right?